All right, you guys, let's do the second half of September 2023 Vedic Sidereal Forecast. So right off the bat on the 15th, we have Mercury going direct. Yay! <laughs> well, I, it wasn't too bad for me this time. I actually got a lot of stuff done, cleaned up my email, you know, just stuff like that. So that's on the 15th. Then on the 17th, um, we have the sun entering sidereal Virgo. So happy birthday to all the Virgos out there. We are so grateful that you are um, so meticulous and analytical and can spot, you know, um, the devil in the details, right? Uh, Virgos are excellent at organizing and helping us to write better, right? So when the sun uh, changes signs every month, you know, it happens for everybody, right? Depending on what house it's in. And so um, in general, those qualities will come out in different areas of your life. Um, again, I'm talking uh, Vedic astrology. This is not Western astrology. So I don't want you to get confused. Um, now, if you are interested in finding out where your sun is in the sidereal system, just go to hindustanastrology.com and uh, click on the consultations tab and yeah we can figure out what your Vedic chart looks like right then on September 25th until January 17th we have Mars combust the Sun so what does this mean well it means uh, when a planet is in within 18 degrees of the Sun um, uh, it is considered in the shadow of the sun because the sun is the superstar of our solar system, right? So when planets are conjunct the sun, uh, we call it a combustion because that planet cannot operate properly. Um, but also the sun gets empowered and when the sun gets empowered, um, it produces a lot of solar flares. And uh, I don't know if you've been Listening to what I was talking about last month with um, the solar flares uh, and producing earthquakes, um, and especially when Uranus went direct, I mean, I'm sorry, when Uranus went retrograde on August 28th, then we had the full blue moon on the 30th, all of that energy built up. And uh, unfortunately, Morocco had the horrible earthquake, uh, 6.8, and all, um, you know, all of us are praying for you over here. Um, you know, it's just so sad. It's you feel so helpless when you watch that happen, right? Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, we are in a solar maximum, and that can produce CMEs, which can produce earthquakes. If you want to learn more about that, uh, you can go to suspiciousobservers.com. Uh, they have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, okay, so Mars combusts the sun. On a personal level, you know, what that means is that, you know, we're, um, uh, sun and Mars are friends, right? Um, and as it travels along the different signs from Virgo to Libra to Scorpio, um, Sagittarius, you know, it will have a different flavor. Um, but in general, it, they empower each other and we can get a lot done. We can have a lot of physical activity. Um, Got to be careful of our anger. Definitely uh, arrogance can, can be um, seen at this time. So, you know, just keep your ego in check, I think is the best advice. Because um, Sun is actually debilitated in Libra. Um, so that <clears throat> has its own significance. I might do another video just on that later. Uh, and then September 26th to October 6th, we have the third Gandanta of Venus. Now, she, you know, she was retrograde. She's now direct. So she's traveling over old territory, right? And when that happens, the issues that happen when she was in those degrees last time will come up. Um, so just look back to, you know, June, July, see what were, what was going on with you and, you know, Venus themes of relationship or money or um, even, you know, a partner for a man. Um, yeah, those things might come up at this time. Um, 
and then she's free after that, after October 6th, she can go forward. Uh, September 29th at 5.58 a.m. EST, we have the full moon at 11 degrees of Pisces Uttara Bhadrapada. And I'm just going to briefly give you a couple, you know, tidbits and tips about it. I'm going to do a separate video about this as well. Now, the full moon um, is going to be conjunct Neptune retrograde. So, those two planets, when they come together, can indicate, you know, oh, a lot of, you know, wonderful creativity, especially with film. Um, uh, psychic and spiritual topics can be, you know, very um, prevalent in, you know, both in your life and in society, in the media, etc., movies. Um, but what I find, because it's the U.S. Uh, fourth house in their birth chart, right? Um, every country has their own birth chart. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but... Um, it can indicate um, that the people in the homeland are having some mental health crises. And I think that's definitely an issue. And um, it's something, you know, like I've talked about, we've got to deal with, with the homeless people or the, um, what do they call, what did I hear on the other news, on the news the other day? Um, they, hold on. They were using the term unhoused. And that is exactly what this um, full moon can be about, right? Fourth, it's happening in the fourth house. Um, so a lot of, you know, mental health issues need to be dealt with. Um, and if you go to YouTube and you can see my full video I did on this month, and I talk about that a little bit more. Um, but the Lord of the, um, of the full moon is Jupiter and Jupiter's retrograde in the fifth house. So this is a time of introspection, a time of examining our beliefs, uh, going over things we've learned, possibly teachers returning to us from the past, um, uh, and maybe even money returning to us from the past, you know? Um, so just, you know, again, if you want to see how this um, works out in your chart, just book a reading with me at HindustanAstrology.com and I would love to help you sift through all of this stuff. Um, now let's talk about the nakshatra just for a second. It's in Uttara Bhadrapada and that is the serpent of the deep. And that right there implies um, sec seclusion, um, loneliness, um, but also it implies the kundalini energy that that starts at the base of the spine and goes up. Um, so it can bring great transformation. So don't be afraid to, you know, be alone and um, let your mind empty out. You know, this is a great time for that. On a mundane level, I will say that I'm a little bit concerned about flooding and drowning. Now, I know that that Hurricane Lee is heading up to the East Coast, there could be some uh, significant flooding from this. Um, so that definitely could pan out at this time. Mm, and what else? Um, well, you know, Rahu's uh, Gandanta. Um, so, uh, you know, I feel like, um, again, we've got to be careful of um, our ego. This is a great time to, you know, meditate and kind of get yourself ready because next month we've got the eclipses and then we've got the nodes changing signs. So um, Rahu is getting into the last degrees and it's going to be, uh, you know, very healing and transformative uh, for everybody, but just be careful of, you know, accidents, things like that. All right. So until next time, I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying the fall and I'll see you later. Bye. Namaste.